Welcome back to ATRE. In this video, I'll give a walkthrough of a basic RMBS model I built. I say RMBS instead of CMBS because the underlying assets amortize over 30 years or the length of an American mortgage and because the model uses uh, prepayments, which CMBS models typically do not. In addition, this model doesn't value each liability structure and doesn't include financial analysis. Instead, it presents how different factors impact the senior and subordinate liability structures, such as prepayment, default, the proportion of senior to subordinate debt, principal reserve, fixed versus floating rate, fees, etc. The theory behind this model is from Keith Allman's 2007 book, Modeling Structured Finance Cash Flows. Now, because the book is 15 years old, the strategies Allman takes to build certain components of the RMBS model are a little outdated. I think that's due to the fact that Excel formulas were not nearly as developed 15 years ago. Some formulas just didn't exist. In addition, his model doesn't accrue unpaid interest. Instead, it just marks unpaid interest down as a loss period by period. I thought the model would be much more robust if interest were accrued, so I built in the accrual into my model. In this structured finance series, I'll walk through how the model works and how I built it including accruing interest, and also touch on some of the more complex aspects of the model or the ones that gave me the most difficulty. For example, different interest rate limitations, caps, floors, frequencies, which I will uh, touch on likely in the next video. Then I'll wrap up by displaying how the inputs work. What you can see here is what I call the control panel, which is made up of three distinct components. Inputs, which are mostly dynamic, and color-coded with blue text, and static uh, inputs, which are color-coded as black. The second component is the cash flow snapshot, which allows the user to peer into the model without actually scrolling through the waterfall or the amortization worksheet. When I was building the model, I would have to move to, say, period 200, and then to period 100, and then period 150, and you just lose a lot of time that way. So the cash flow snapshot is purely for user efficiency. And the third component is a series of tests to ensure that the model is working right. The first is a cash in equals cash out test, ensuring that every single dollar generated by the underlying assets, less fees, is distributed to the pool. That is easily the most complex and difficult test to complete, but without it, the model uh, can't be said to be accurate. The next three tests check balances at maturity. The second asset balance ensures the amortization schedule is working right. Now, if the next two tests don't work, that is, if the senior and subordinate balances don't equal zero at maturity, that doesn't mean that the model uh, is inaccurate. What it means is that the rate used to generate asset level cash flows isn't high enough to pay off those liabilities, which can happen for an array of reasons, as you'll soon see. I also added this goal seek functionality to solve for a weighted average fixed rate, which sets the subordinate tranche in the final period. Uh, in this case, that's the 30 years or 360 months equal to zero. And that also ensures that the asset pool generates the exact amount of revenue to pay off both the senior and subordinate debt. The model can switch between four different payment frequencies, monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, and annually. The way that works is through the dynamic dates and day adjustment. If we change the inputs from monthly to quarterly, the day adjustment increases to 0.25 and the dates adjust accordingly. It's a very efficient way of changing payment frequencies without messing up the model. You may have noticed that when I change to a quarterly payment, the subordinate principal doesn't get paid off, and the balance at maturity is negative 20 million. That's because the fixed rate, which is set to pay off the subordinate debt, um, was calculated with monthly payments. With less frequent payments, principal is unable to get paid off as quickly, and therefore a higher rate is going to be required. This is a great time to see how the goal seek functionality works and explore the effect frequency can have on the liability structure. So let me solve for the rate which sets the final subordinate liability balance equal to zero. That's an interesting part of this model I forgot about. There's so many permutations here that even my new laptop is having a hard time solving for that fixed rate. So I'm gonna help the goal seek out a little and get the number closer to zero, and then solve with goal seek again. Now 
Now you can see that the interest rate required uh, to pay off the subordinate tranche has increased by about 100 basis points, meaning that the jump from monthly to quarterly payments has quite a large impact on the sequential payment structure. Moving on to the amortization worksheet, which is actually the heart of the model, uh, it, it's built in two stages. The notional amortization table is textbook, paying down principal as the difference between notional payment and required interest. The trickiest part here is to have interest rates reflect the confines of the inputs, such as interest rate caps and floors, like I mentioned previously. To the right is actual amortization. In effect, the pool principal is reduced by defaults, prepayments, and amortizations. Defaults are not paid out as cash flow, though. They only decrease the total balance. OMEN also includes a basic credit swap, so I include one as well. I'm not going to touch on the credit swap because it's not the focus of the model and really doesn't make much of a difference. Now for the waterfall, the most complex part of the model. This is the first structured finance model I've ever built, so I admit that the model could be much cleaner and have more robust assumptions. And there is one key item to note here. The model I built pays off interest and principal sequentially, meaning that the senior tranche is paid interest, then the senior tranche is paid principal, then the subordinate tranche is paid interest, and then the subordinate tranche is paid principal. I know that in many CMBS models, tranche interest is paid to each tranche sequentially, then principal is paid sequentially, with interest shortfalls being applied first to interest, then to principal. Cash flows from the modified amortization table come in here at column I, and then fees are subtracted. As I noted, I built the waterfall to pay off senior interest, senior principal, subordinate interest, and finally subordinate principal. So in effect, although there's only two tranches, there are four waterfalls. In this model, unpaid interest is accrued, but unpaid principal is counted as a loss. That being said, the model does account for that, and I solve for zero principal loss um, with the goal seek function. I'll show you how the interest works here. In columns M through Q, interest is calculated, accrued if not paid off in the previous period, and then paid off with the cash flow available for distribution. This interest tracker here zeroes out when all unpaid interest has been settled. A negative number in the tracker means that the interest balance is being paid down, whereas a positive number means that the interest balance is growing. Cash remaining, column R, is simply the difference between cash flow available for distribution and the interest paid to the senior tranche, which concludes the first waterfall. From the available cash flow after senior interest pool, senior principal is paid off. There is also a working principal reserve, which you can see here in columns A, B through A, E, which is funded by a set amount every month. The remaining cash flow in column W includes that principal reserve. Skipping over to the subordinate structure, note interest due is calculated the same way as in the senior debt structure. The only difference here is that interest paid is based off cash flow remaining after paying off the senior interest in principal. Then principal paid is the minimum of either cash flow remaining after senior interest, senior principal, and subordinate interest, or uh, the principal due. Okay, if all goes well, we've paid off our liabilities. But what happens if there's extra cash flow? Well, the model is currently set to not generate a lot of extra cash flow since our liabilities are set to pay off exactly at the end of the period. But if I increase the weighted average fixed rate, we can see what happens. So I'm just going to increase that fixed rate to 7%. Now, excess cash flow is calculated as the difference between cash remaining after the senior tranche and total subordinate interest due. That's a bit of a shortcut and wouldn't work for multiple tranches. But with two tranches, it works for two reasons. First, because of the assumption that senior interest in principal is paid before subordinate interest, then subordinate principal. And second, because in that case, all excess cash flow is applied to the senior tranche and then all excess cash flow is applied to the subordinate tranche. Uh, there's only one case where 
excess principal is split between the two, and that's when uh, the senior tranche is paid off and the subordinate tranche starts to get paid off. We can see here in row 217 that the same structure applies to the subordinate tranche. Right? If principal is left over after paying the senior tranche, it flows through to subordinate debt, like I mentioned. And that's pretty much how this basic RMBS model works. Like I said, it's a very basic model with simplistic waterfall assumptions, and the model itself is not very robust. But as you'll see next video, it's a good way to test out how different parameters can affect the liability level cash flows. For example, what would happen if we turned payments to semi-annual? Uh, payments instead of monthly payments? Or what would happen if we increased different fees or reduce them? What would happen if we increase the loss amounts, um, the prepayments, etc.? And all those factors are going to flow through uh, to the model. So in any case, I hope you enjoyed the walkthrough of this model. Thank you.